Question 1. Find the sum of 5.25 times 10 to the 16th and 2 times 10 to the 14th. Write your answer in scientific notation. These numbers to be added, the exponents need to match. So let's change the 14 to a 16. The exponent went up twice. So the number out front needs to get smaller and it needs to, the decimal needs to move twice. So it's going to be 0.02 times 10 to the 16. This number doesn't change. Now to add, we just do 5.25 plus 0 0.02, which is 5.27. 5.27 times 10 to the 16. Question two, what is the difference between 6.4 times 10 to the 11th and 1 1.6 times 10 to the 10th in scientific notation? Same process, except we're subtracting. The exponents need to match, so let's change this to an 11. The exponent got bigger, this number needs to get smaller, so it's gonna be 0.16. The first number doesn't change. Let's subtract these numbers. 6.4 minus 0.16, I gotta do some borrowing here. 6.24 times 10 to the 11th. The scientists at Little Valley Labs are growing bacteria colonies. The table shows how many bacteria colonies each petri dish has grown. Find the total number of bacteria colonies. Write your answer in scientific notation. Uh, total means add. So we just need to add all these numbers up. So let's make them all have the same exponent. Let's make them all turn into an eight since eight is the biggest. So we're just gonna leave this number alone. Instead of six, we're gonna change that to an eight. The exponent going up twice means this number has its decimal moved to the left twice. So now it's gonna be 0.08. The exponent here is going to change to 8. Went up once, so instead of 6.3, uh, it's going to be 0.63. So now we just need to add all these numbers up, and our answer is going to be 10 to the 8th. So let's add up 6.2, 0 0.08, 0 0.63, add a 0 there. Now let's do 8 plus 3 is 11. 1, 2, 3. 9, 6.91 times 10 to the 8th. This is a word problem, so we should label it colonies. Question 4. Rocket A has a mass of 3.75 times 10 to the 7th kilograms. Rocket B has a mass of 4.1 times 10 to the 6th kilograms. Write a number in scientific notation that represents how much heavier Rocket A is than Rocket B. If we want to find out how much heavier something is, we should subtract. So we should subtract the bigger one, which is rocket A, minus the smaller one, which is rocket B. Let's change the exponent here to be a seven instead of a six. That'll change the decimal out front to be 0 0.41. This number's not gonna change. Let's subtract 3.75 minus 0 0.41 and get 3.34 times 10 to the 7th. Uh, this is a word problem, so it needs a label, which is kilograms. Question 5. Subtract. Write your answer in scientific notation. The exponents don't match. Let's change this to a 14. The number gets bigger. The number up front needs to get smaller. Let's subtract the numbers out front. 1.2 minus 0.93. Yeah, zero there. Let's do some borrowing. 10 minus 3 is 7. Some more borrowing. 11 minus 10 is minus 2.27 times 10 to the 14. The answer would be right, but uh, it's not in scientific notation like the directions say. So we need to make this 2.7, which is bigger. So we need to make the exponent smaller. Question six, find the sum of 8.25 times 10 to the 19th and 6.3 times 10 to the 17th. These numbers need to be added because sum means to add. 
Let's change the 17 to a 19. Too bigger. Let's make the decimal move twice here and become smaller. All right, we have 8.25 times 10 to the 19. Does it change? Let's add. When you add here, we're going to get 8.313 times 10 to the 19th. Question 7. Write the sum of A, B, and C in scientific notation. So that means add. Let's add all these numbers. Hey, they already have exponents that all match, so we just have to add all these numbers. We add all these up, we get 1723, 14.3 times 10 to the eighth. Uh, this is not the correct answer because it says it needs to be in scientific notation. So let's make this 1.43. The number up front got smaller, the exponent needs to get bigger. Question eight, write the difference between 6.66 .66 times 10 to the 18th and 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 16th in scientific notation. So let's subtract. Let's change this exponent to 18, which makes this 0 0.022. It needs to move twice. Let's not change this at all. Let's subtract. Do some borrowing. 10 minus 2 is 8. 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 minus 0 is 6. 6.638 6 times 10 to the 18th. Question 9. Solve the equation. The old offense. There's variables on both sides. Let's move the smaller variable. So I'm going to do plus 2x to both sides. I get 4x minus 4 equals 8. And I'm going to move everything away from the variable. So I'm going to do plus 4 on both sides. Get 4x equals 12. Divide by 4 on both sides and get x equals 3. That canceled, that canceled, that canceled. Question 10. Solve the equation. Uh, both sides have parentheses. Let's distribute 24x plus 48 equals 24x plus 48. Uh, let's go to move variables all to one side. There's the same variable on both sides. So when I do minus 24x to both sides, they will both cancel. I'm left with 48 equals 48. This is a true statement. So that means that this equation has infinite solutions. Question 11, solve for m. Let's start with distributing on both sides. We have 32, 32m plus 12 minus 2m equals 30m plus 10 plus 2. Now we've some combining like terms over here. 32 minus 2 is 30m plus 12. Over here we have some combining like terms as well. We have 30m plus 12. You have variables on both sides. When we try to move one, they'll both cancel and we're left with 12 equals 12. That's a true statement. So this has infinite solutions. Question 12, how many solutions does the equation have? So if I go to solve this equation, I'm going to start by moving the smaller variable, which is negative 5x. So when I do plus 5x to both sides, I get 10x minus 9 equals 9. Now let's get everything away from the variable. Do plus 9 to both sides. 10x equals 18. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. x equals 1.8. The question asks how many solutions does it have? It has one solution, it's 1.8. Question 13, solve for P. Let's distribute, 
get 16p minus 56 equals negative 16. Let's move everything away from the variable and do plus 56 to both sides. So we get 16p equals 40. 40 divided by 16 is 2.5. So p equals 2.5. Question 14, which equation will have no solutions? For an equation to have no solutions, there needs to be variables on both sides, which all of them have. The variables have to have the same coefficients on both sides. So this one is a two X, this one is a negative two X, so that one's out. This one has an eight X, this one has a three X, that one's out. This one has a four X, this one has a four X, this one's still in. This one has 6x, this one has 6x, this one's still in. For it to have no solutions, the variables have to have the same coefficients, but the constants, the plain old numbers, have to be different. So in this one, they're both five, they're both positive five. So this one, choice C, will have infinite solutions. We want one with no solutions. This one has a negative nine on this side, and doesn't have a number at all on this side, so when you go to solve this, it's like saying, hey, some number is equal to itself minus nine, which will never be true. The answer to 14 is D. 15, solve for X. Let's distribute and get 12 X minus 30 equals eight X plus four. There's variables on both sides. Let's move the smaller one and do minus eight X to both sides, which is four X minus 30 equals four. Let's do plus 30 to both sides to get rid of this minus 30 and get 4x equals 34. Divide both sides by 4 and get x equals 8.5. Question 16, there's parentheses on both sides. Let's distribute and get 40x minus 10 equals 40x plus 30. Variables on both sides are the same, so when we go to move them, they'll both cancel. And we'll be left with negative 10 equals 30, which is not true, so we cross off the equal sign and we write no solution. Question 17. Which expression is not equivalent to three to the second divided by three to the six? When you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. Two minus six is negative four. So we're looking for three to the negative fourth as a problem, which uh, there it is right there. Uh, the problem says which one's not equivalent, so we know it's not choice C. Uh, you can rewrite three to the negative fourth as one over three to the positive fourth with the problem in the denominator, which is choice B. These two are the same thing. Um, and three to the fourth is 81, so one over 81 is also equivalent to uh, B and C. That leaves choice A, three to the third in the denominator is not the same as three to the fourth in the denominator, so it's choice A. Number 18, simplify each expression, write any non-integer answer as a fraction. So let's do this problem without the negative 12 squared, which is 144. The negative exponent takes the answer we're supposed to have and takes the reciprocal of it. So instead of 144, it's gonna be one over 144. Same with this one, let's do without the negative, two to the third is eight. The negative exponent takes the answer and flips it upside down to be one over eight. 25 to the first is 25, so 25 to the negative first is one over 25. And anything to the zero power is one. Question 19, when you multiply, you add the exponents. So four plus six is 10. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. So 12 minus six is six. When you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply them. So three times two is six. And when you divide, you subtract exponents. This one has a secret exponent of one. One minus three is negative two. So q to the negative two, which can be rewritten as one over q to the two. 
Question 20. Uh, when you multiply, you add the exponents. 19 plus 13 is 32. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. 37 minus 18, which is 19. When you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So that's i to the 48. 8 times 6 is 48. When you multiply, you add exponents. And 49 plus this secret 1 is r to the 50th. And this one, when you divide, you subtract exponents. 23 minus 23 is zero. The answer to this one's y to the zero, and anything to the zero power is one. Question 21, simplify. Write any non-integer answer as a fraction. Let's do this problem without the negative exponent. Two to the regular fifth. Two to the fifth is two times two times two times two times two. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 30. <coughs> 32, excuse me. A negative exponent makes your answer, instead of 32, 1 over 32. Uh, this one, 3 to the negative 4th, well, let's just do 3 to the 4th. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 9 is 81. A negative exponent makes it 1 over 81 instead. 4 to the negative third. 4 to the third is 64. So 4 to the negative third is 1 over 64. 5 to the second is 25. So 5 to the negative second will be 1 over 25. 6 to the first is 6. So 6 to the negative first is 1 over 6. Question 22, which variables would make this statement true? So we need to figure out which numbers here could go in for these letters and make a true statement. So let's start with this one. If we put a two there and a six there, we'd get two to the negative third is one over six. Well, two to the third is eight. So this is not right because this should be an eight, not a six. So it's not that. Uh, let's try this one, choice B. 2 to the negative third equals 1 over 1 eighth. Well, that's not true. Uh, the answer to 2 to the negative third should be 1 over 8, not 1 over 1 over 8 like that. So it's not B. Looks like it's going to be choice C. 2 to the negative third equals 1 over 8. That's exactly what we want. 2 to the third is 8, so 2 to the negative third is 1 over 8. That's choice C, but let's just double check. Uh, choice D says negative 2 to the negative third is one over eight. Well, that's not true because a negative out front would make this a negative one eighth. So that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is C. Question 23, which choice is equivalent to three to the third squared? All we have to do to simplify this is take the exponents and multiply them because a power to a power can be simplified by multiplying the exponents. So three times two is six. The answer is choice B. If we look at this, we square something. That means we need to multiply it by itself twice. So let's take 3 to the third, multiply it by itself, a total of two times. And then using our power rules, uh, when you multiply, you add the exponents. So 3 plus 3 is 6. See? Choice B. Question 24. Simplify using the laws of exponents. When you multiply, you add the exponents. So 12 plus 8 is 20. 13 plus negative 4 is 9. Uh, 6 plus negative 5 is 1. Uh, you can actually answer that one. 12 to the first is 12. 31 plus negative 12 is uh, 19. Uh, negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. Uh, if we want, we can answer answer 2 to the 14th. That's uh, 16,384, and it's over, or it's underneath a 1 because it's a negative exponent. And negative 40 plus negative 40 is negative 80. Question 25. Which word does not describe angles A and B? Uh, vertical angles are across from one another. These are vertical angles. 
Adjacent angles are next to one another. Uh, they share a side. So for these two to be adjacent, B would need to be here. See how those are adjacent? Or A would need to be here. See how those are adjacent? Uh, these two angles, A and B, are not adjacent. So we're going to pick B. Uh, let's double check. These are congruent. Vertical angles, angles across from another like this, when you make an X, are congruent. And A and B are acute, right? They're less than 90, so it's not D. Uh, they are not adjacent. Question 26, define absolute value. Absolute value is the distance, a uh, number is from zero. Remember the symbol for absolute value is those two bars. And the answer to absolute value is always positive because distance is always positive. 27, which choice is a measure of how much space an object takes up? So you're talking about a three-dimensional object and you're talking about how much space it takes up. Uh, that's talking about volume. Volume is the measure of uh, how, how much material it would take to make it or how much space is inside of it. Question 28, fill in the blank. Two angles are blank if they combine to form a right angle. Uh, congruent angles mean that they're the same. So it's not that. Uh, corresponding means that they're angles in the same spot but in different gr angle groups. It's not that. Complementary means the two angles add up to 90. And 90 is a right angle, so it is this one. Supplementary means they add up to 180. It's not that one. So 28 is C. Question 29. What is the distance around the outside of a polygon called? A polygon's a shape, and if we're measuring the distance around the outside of the whole shape, that's perimeter, C. Question 30. Define the word reciprocal. Reciprocal is when you uh, take a fraction like A over B and you switch it so you switch the numerator and the denominator. So the definition of reciprocal is to flip a fraction. So the numerator and denominator switch spots. Okay? Question 31, define the word horizontal. Horizontal means left to right. And this might be best defined with a picture. Horizontal's left to right. Question 32, to which number set do all these numbers belong? Uh, there's a negative in this. There's a couple negatives in this. Counting numbers are never negative, so it's not that. Uh, natural numbers are also never negative. Actually, counting numbers and natural numbers are the same thing. Uh, whole numbers cannot be negative either. Um, whole numbers are zero or higher, no decimals. So it's not that. Integers are allowed to be positives or negatives or zero with no decimals or fractions. So 20, uh, 32 is D. Question 36, or question 33. There are 36 carpenters in a crew. On a certain day, 29 of them were present. What percentage showed up to work? Let's do a proportion for this. So 29 out of 36, and I want to know how many out of 100, because remember, percent is always out of 100. So when we multiply this, we're going to get 36x equals 2,900. Let's divide both sides by 36, and we're going to get x equals... 80.5 repeating. It says round to the nearest tenth, so that would be 80.6 percent. Question 34. Ben earns $12,800 in a year. About 15% is taken out for taxes. How much is taken out for taxes? So we just need to do uh, 15 out of 100 equals, we don't know how much his taxes are, but we know his entire total for a check is $12,800. So 15 out of 100, and we don't know how much the taxes are out of 12,800. So let's cross multiply here and get 100x equals 15 times 12,800 is 
192,000. And when you divide both sides by 100, you're going to get x equals $1,920 for taxes. Question 35. The Royal softball team played 75 games and won 55 of them. What percentage of the game did they lose? Oh, this is an important thing to read carefully here. They told us how many games they won. And they want to know the percentage of loss. So we need to start by figuring out how many games they lost. So if we subtract, we the, they lost 20 games. So they lost 20 out of their 75 games. And I want to know what percentage this is out of 100. So if we cross multiply, we're going to get 2,000 equals 75x. If we divide both sides by 75, we're going to get 2,000 divided by 75, which is 26.6 repeating. So for an answer, this would be 26.7%. Uh, I don't want that repeating by the way. Question 36. There are 45 students in a class and 40% of these students pass their chemistry test. What number of these students pass their test? Round if necessary. So 40 out of 100 kids pass the test. That's what 40% means. And I want to know how many of these kids out of 45 pass the test. If we cross multiply, we're going to get 100x equals 45 times 40 is 1800. We divide both sides by 100. We get x equals 18. 18 students. 18. Sally decided to look at a new and used SUV. Sally found a new SUV for $40,000. Typically, a used SUV goes for 35% of a new SUV. So what price would a used SUV be? Round your answer to the nearest whole number if necessary. So 35 out of 100, because it's 35%. And we want to know how much will a used be, which we know is going to be lower than 40,000. That's why the X goes on top. So when we cross multiply, we get 100X equals 35 times 40,000 is 100, 1,400,000. And we divide by 100 on both sides. We get x equals 1, 4, 3 zeros. 14,000. Uh, so that's the price. It says typically a used SUV goes for 35% of a new SUV. Uh, so 35% is 14,000. Okay, just double checking that we don't need to subtract in this problem. Question 38. A certain school has 120 teachers. If this con con constitutes 30% of its workforce, find the number of employees in the school. So 30 out of 100. They're saying that there's 120 teachers, which is only a small number of the entire uh, number of employees that work there. So we're going to put x on the bottom. So when we cross multiply, we get 30x equals uh, 12,000. When we divide both sides by 30, we get x equals 400. There's 400 employees total. Question 39. There are 80 coins in, of $5 in the purse. These coins are 20% of the purse's total coins. How many coins are there in the purse? Uh, so they're saying that 20 out of 100, and they're saying 80 coins of $5 in the purse. Uh, so this specific type of coin is only 20% of the entire purse. And they're saying there's 80 of them, but we don't know how many coins are to in total in the purse. 
So we cross multiply, we're gonna get 20x equals 8,000. Divide by 20, get x equals 400. There's 400 coins in this purse, apparently, and 80 of them are $5 coins. And that's 20% of the overall purse. So 400 coins. Question 30, or question 40. 32 out of every 50 rhinoceroses in captivity are male. What percentage is this? So 32 out of 55, x out of 100. We cross multiply, we get 55x equals 3200. We divide by 55, x equals 3200 divided by 55, which is 58.18181. Oh, it's repeating. Uh, it says round to the nearest tenth anyway, so it's going to be 58.2. Question 41. Translate F, G, H, I, J to the right two units and up one unit. Label the image F prime, G prime, H prime, I prime, J prime. So he wants to move this shape to the right two and up one. Right two, up one, that's where J prime is. Right two, up one, that's where I prime is. Right two, up one, that's where H prime is. Right two, up one, that's where G prime is. Right two, up one, that's where F prime is. Let's connect them using a ruler. There we go, there's our new shape. 42, plot the following points. One one, which is P prime. Two two, which is Q prime. Three one, which is R prime. And two negative one, is S prime. And they want to know, describe the translation that occurred. Well, this shape moved over there. How far did it move? Uh, we translated to the right one, two, three, four, five. And we went down two. Question 43, translate QPR to the left three units and down one unit. So left three, down one, that's Q prime. Left three, down one, that's R prime. Left three, down one, that's P prime. Connect with a ruler, and we have our new shape. 44, describe a translation on QRSP that would create P prime, negative one, negative two. There's P prime. So if P prime is there, Q prime is up one and over one. So Q prime would be there. Uh, R prime is two across, so R prime would be there. And S is three below Q, so S would be there. So I recreated the whole shape even though I didn't need to. They just want to know how did P turn into P prime. It went to the right three. One, two, three, and it went down one, two, three, four, five. It went down five. Question 45, plot triangle D, E, F. D is right there. E is right there and then F is right there. We got a tiny little triangle here. It says translate D E F to the right two units. Label the new image D prime E prime F prime. So we just need to move everything to the right two. One, two, F prime is right there. Two, D prime is right there. One, two, E prime is right there. So you just have triangle that moved over a little bit. Question 46. Translate polygon J and Z to the right one unit and up four units. Right one, up four. It's hard to see, but it's J prime. Right one, one, two, three, four. N prime is right there. One, one, two, three, four. Z prime is right there. Connect these with a ruler. And we have our new shape. 
47. Plot L prime, which is 0, 4. K prime, which is negative 2, 3. Uh, J prime, which is negative 1, 1. And M prime, which is 0, 2. Let's connect this. Describe the translation that occurred to create this shape. So this moved over to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Moved to the left, five, and it moved five and down one. Question 48, plot the polygon ABCD. Negative one, negative one, A. B is 1, negative 1. C is 2, 1. D is negative 2, 1. Looks like we have ourselves a trapezoid here. Now it wants to plot these points, which are, are 2, negative 3, which is right there. 4, negative 3, which is right there. 5, negative 1, which is right there. And D is 1, negative 1. D is right there, right on top of the old B. What was the translation that occurred on A, B, C, D to create A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime? Well, move to the right. 1, 2, 3. Move to the right, 3. And down, 2. Right, 3 down two.